Uh, let me start off here. Uh, we've been chatting, but uh, welcome everyone to uh, today's lecture of opportunity. Uh, this is part of our Blue Economy series. Uh, so focusing on this idea, this concept of the Blue Economy, I am Professor Kate Walsh. I teach in the National Security Affairs Department. Uh, within that, the policy analysis subcourse, and I also research on China and uh, am a China Maritime Studies Institute affiliate at the college. Um, it's through my research on China's own strategies and plans and policies on the blue economy, uh, through which I've done some outreach here in the United States. And one of my uh, early calls was to uh, Jen McGann, our speaker today, to try and understand the blue economy as it's evolving and emerging in the United States. So uh, Jen is going to talk about that for us. Uh, Jennifer McCann is director of the U.S. Coastal Programs at the University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography Coastal Resources Center in Rhode Island Sea Grant. Uh, the center published a report uh, this spring uh, that is online and freely available, which is going to talk to us about it today, uh, that is detailed on Rhode Island's own blue economy and how it's developed and uh, why it's important and connect that to maritime and naval interests for us, uh, why we should care about it. Uh, just a few administrative announcements before I get going, and, and I should say there's more on Jen's bio in, in, in the announcement, um, so take a look if you haven't had a chance, uh, but to save time for the presentation, uh, we are going to be recording the presentation today of this lecture uh, up until the Q&A section, so we'll have a break at, after uh, Jen's formal presentation. Uh, that video will be shared with the War College community uh, and beyond, so Jen has graciously agreed to do that and also to share slides at the end, so if you're like me, you don't have to keep taking pictures of it. She'll, she's going to share them with us. And uh, the report itself, of course, is, is available online, as I said. Uh, we'll turn off the, the recording at the start of the Q&A section, uh, at which point we'll revert to or switch to Chatham House rules, at which point, uh, please, uh, you can talk about what was said, but not uh, affiliate uh, anyone who said X, Y, Z. Uh, and of course, the disclaimer necessary that this lecture, anyone uh, who says anything here is not necessarily representing the views of, of the U.S. Navy, the Naval War College, Department of Defense, or the U.S. government, government but our personal views of those speaking. Uh, we will mute everyone during the presentation, but then uh, because Jen, we, we talked a bit beforehand, she'd like to have more of an open Q&A, so we'll open up the mic at the Q&A section. Uh, so please be ready with your questions uh, and comments then. Uh, let me thank, as always, Ms. Laura Cavallaro for her help in uh, making this happen. Uh, she's in the background making sure nothing goes wrong, happily. Uh, and for any students and faculty or others, uh, we have an email listserv group that uh, some of our viewers are part of, the Oceanography and Maritime Security Group. Uh, it's open uh, to anyone. Uh, it's just sharing information on maritime security, ocean science, uh, blue economy type issues. So if you're interested in more of these issues, please uh, sign up on that group. Uh, through the group app or just send me an email and, and I'll add you to our group. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jen for her presentation, followed by Q&A. Thanks. Over to you, Jen. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen now. Um, Perfect. Okay, great. Well, um, and again, thank you, Kate, and thank you everyone for joining uh, me today on a nice rainy day. Um, to learn about uh, Rhode Island's blue economy and um, maritime and naval roles in charting the course um, towards this, uh, the future here. So um, again, I am Jen McCann and I am represent uh, the University of Rhode Island Coastal Resources Center, which is part of the Graduate School of Oceanography and uh, the Rhode Island um, Sea Grant College Program. We're over on the Bay Campus. And um, when I, people ask me what we do, um, our job is to work with um, coastal communities, uh, industry, maritime and coastal industries, um, other universities around the world to make our coast and oceans a better place to live, work and play. And we do this by bringing the best available science to the table as well as best management practices from other places and um, uh, provide opportunities and forums to learn um, so that we can um, improve how we do things um, along our coasts and oceans. So um, I would say, I, I just wanna, I, I don't know any of you and, I, and obviously we're on uh, the, Zoom, the Zoom call. Um, I would say, um, so most of you have either spent time on a Navy warship or maybe you've gone fishing either commercially or 
maybe on a Saturday afternoon with your family, or maybe you've even eaten at a seafood restaurant in Newport or in Rhode Island someplace or in your own community. And all of these activities and examples are um, examples of the blue economy or the Maritime Aca Academy. I I'm sorry, I know I'm talking, um, the Maritime Economy. And um, we have a Senator here in Rhode Island, Senator Whitehouse, who um, talks about how in Rhode Island, our blue economy is very strong. The different sectors are extremely strong. And what we need to do um, is to take these stars, these strong stars and make a constellation of it so that we are encouraging synergies amongst the different sectors that make up the maritime economy or the ocean economy and, um, and, and to move forward strategically. Um, we have a saying here in the United States, a rising tide lifts all boats. And by establishing uh, a more um, integrated blue economy, um, there's an opportunity to not only build our economic sector, but also to um, respond to the societal issues that we are all facing um, and to do a better job on this. So, um, and that is one reason why Rhode Island um, uh, funded us, and I'm gonna go into more detail on that, to first define what is Rhode Island's blue economy. And I have um, Bruce Corliss, who's here on this call, um, to thank for that, because he's the one that provided us with the funding, recognizing there was a need to do that. Um, I also see Molly McGee and John Riando on the call as well, who really um, helped our team at URI to understand what is Rhode Island's blue economy and how we should be moving forward. Now, um, when you say blue economy um, and Google it, say you can find definitions that um, the United Nations is using, um, other countries like Norway is using or regions like San Diego or even Cape Cod. And what we felt what was important when we decided to and, and agreed to define what is Rhode Island's blue economy is to really define it the way the people of Rhode Island are defining it. So um, what we did is we looked at, um, we, we are, because we're Rhode Island Sea Grant, we are part of the NOAA community. And we were able to, I am not an economist. And so we were able to bring in um, some of the NOAA economists who work daily on defining what is the ocean economy for the country. Um, we were also to bring in, um, to some degree, to keep us honest, a, um, a resource economist at URI too, who, who, you know, he sort of helped us out um, on ensuring that our numbers were accurate and um, defensible. Um, but we looked at federal data, federal information, um, economic data, but we also looked at the non-federal data. So for example, um, Sunidia, Molly McGee um, here, um, did a great report on what is the um, economic value of the defense industry. And we're sharing some of that information on this um, call. Um, we also recognize that in Rhode Island, it's really important to understand from a, uh, a leadership perspective, what is the value, what is the, the the, the connection um, of the blue economy um, by blue economy leaders. So we were able to interview over 60 people um, to ask them, um, what are the connections? How can we can do better? And then we also undertook um, a network analysis um, to uh, do that as well. So um, the way we're defining in Rhode Island or we're proposing to define it is, um, is uh, Basically, it's to it's the economic sectors that have a direct or indirect link to Rhode Island's coasts and oceans. And um, this is a, a list of the seven major um, sectors within the economy, blue economy. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail uh, later on on this. But we also recognize that um, I, I changed this picture specifically for this presentation that you know, higher education and research is really, these institutions are really um, significant um, to our blue economy. And um, in addition, 
uh, government entities and civic organizations are, are really critical. Um, the top right um, image here on this slide is um, a, a picture of our state agencies working with um, the private uh, uh, nonprofit organizations, as well as the um, marine trades industry to promote clean marinas and clean resilient marinas, recognizing that our blue economy really depends upon a clean en en environment. So um, recognizing there's lots of integration and a need for support on these things. Another aspect of the way we define our blue economy is the need for enhancers. And enhancers we call are basically the foundation, um, foundational platform upon which the sectors thrive. So um, we have quality of place, which is um, the relationship that um, people have with the natural landscape, um, uh, responding to workforce demands, investing in innovation, and um, looking at resiliency. Um, so this was one of the hardest slides and, and basically sums up what we found um, to be a very, very conservative but defensible number for the, um, the value of Rhode Island's blue economy. And um, uh, this isn't, as you, you know, I showed you seven sectors. I also talked about research and academic institutions. Um, there's really, um, there's no real document that has done a, a similar methodology for defining the entire um, blue economy. But um, our feeling is, is we can say that conservatively, um, the value of blue economy in Rhode Island is about $5.2 billion, and the number of jobs is over 36,000. And um, again, this is, um, I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that for the moment. So I'm going to go over just quickly uh, a little bit of, of some of the information that we found. And um, I'm going to start with tourism and recreation. Um, as many of you know, um, so, so in this slide, if you look at this is, um, we're sort of showcasing Jessica Willie, and there's a picture of um, Jessica Willie uh, with her family, and she's the CEO of the Block Island Tourism Council. And um, what I want to point out for, for tourism is if you look at um, in the parentheses, the total for tourism and recreation in the state of Rhode Island, according to a state report, is $4.3 billion, and there's over 83,000 jobs there. Now, the thing about this report is um, it includes all of tourism and recreation in Rhode Island. So both the non-marine and non-coastal, um, it, was, it, was, it was not divided in there. So we wanna, sh we wanna recognize that tourism and recreation is a big industry in Rhode Island. Um, and that tourism and recreation also includes fisheries, it includes marine trades and in this report. So what we needed to do, the only reason, the reason why we're putting hotel and lodging is because there was not redundancy in the other sector. So, so we're pointing out right now that um, these numbers here, the one thing that I, I think is important that Jessica brings out in her um, profile in the report is that you know, um, people come for, to do tourism and recreation, Rhode Islanders do, for the beauty and the quality of the place. So how much is, how much is too much tourism? How many tourists do we really want? Um, uh, generally speaking, these jobs are not the highest paying. So how much tourism and recreation do we want to encourage? Do we want to encourage research tourism or educational tourism? So um, those are the points I want to bring out for tourism and recreation. We have Jason Kelly, um, who represents um, ports and shipping here. And um, Jason is the um, CEO for Moran Shipping, which is a huge international shipping company. And what is on Jason's mind is um, how can we make our ports uh, more smart and green? Um, in other words, um, can they, um, can we implement technologies and innovations to eliminate carbon and sulfur emissions, for example, or reduce ship strikes to right whales? And what about the ballast water management for invasive species? So these, this is on the mind of ports and shipping. And again, these are all opportunities um, that we can strive to respond to. 
Um, another um, uh, sector is obviously fisheries. And uh, we show, we highlight um, Jason McNamee, who thinking in the future, um, what Jason's concerned about, and again, he's the chief, um, the, um, let's see, he is the chief of the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management's Division of Fisheries Man of Marine Fisheries. And what Jason is wants to consider is, can we be innovative in our management? Um, can we provide fishermen with more flexibility on what they fish? And is the traditional commercial fishing activities that we are seeing today, is that what the future of fishing is going to um, look like? Can we have smaller vessels? Can we use different technologies to fish? Um, and because you know, the ocean is getting more crowded, um, climate change is changing, um, the fish species that are off of our coast. So we need to be um, aware of those things. And again, other opportunities. Aquaculture in Rhode Island is one of the fastest growing industries in the state. And um, this is um, Catherine Puckett, who um, is actually grows kelp um, off of Block Island. And again, it's one of the fastest growing industries um, that, um, again, you know, people want to promote aquaculture. Um, but also there's, there's conflict between, you know, is, our, is aquaculture um, conflicting too much with tourism or recreational activities? Uh, renewable energy, as many of you may know, Rhode Island, this is off the coast of Block Island, and you can see the mainland in the um, far part of the picture. Um, many feel that offshore renewable energy in the United States is going to be one of the biggest infrastructure investments that this country has seen in decades. So currently we have these five turbines in state waters and then Virginia has two wind turbines as well. But um, the expectation is that um, by 2030, we will likely see 2000 additional wind turbines off the Atlantic coastline. Um, and that might that will create over 8,000, 80,000 jobs. And I'm not even talking about the, the cable laying and the, the land-based um, infrastructure that's being required. So we actually don't really know what the value of, of offshore wind is in, in Rhode Island um, per se, but we know that it is a booming industry and a real opportunity to grow um, our economy. Um, I'm going to, so I'm going to slow down a little bit with marine trades and defense here. This is Wendy Mackey, who's the CEO of the Rhode Island Marine Trades Association. And, uh, I, you know, I've talked a bit about clean and uh, resilient marinas. Um, the composites industry is also um, an amazing um, industry that's really thrived. It started with creating boats like the America's boat, the America's boats that were used in America's, um, America's Cup. And now composites um, is involved in at least five or six other sectors, whether they're creating musical instruments or um, parts for amusement park, um, park um, rides in for Disney World. So it's really a booming industry that's bringing the, that's bolstering the economy and um, engaging in the defense industry and, and offshore wind as well. Um, defense obviously is huge. It's one of the highest paying jobs um, here in Rhode Island. And um, here we have Stephanie Murphy and Amanda Costa, who work for Navitech, who went to URI, I will say. And, um, you know, they're quoted as saying, you know, um, you know, this Rhode Island is the Silicon Valley um, for um, within the defense industry for undersea ocean technology. And um, that's expanding as well. Um, 66% of Rhode Island companies doing business with defense see expansion opportunities. And again, that's from Senedia. So um, just to go a little bit further into what the defense cluster is, um, again, it's, um, this is a, it includes the private sector and, um, the, def and the military defense industry. Um, and it's really an opportunity to establish global military solutions and strategies. Um, this is a list of some of the maritime entities within the defense industry. And as you can see, it includes the Naval War College. It includes the, the private sector, the electric boat and Raytheon. 
And then the last, the last three bullets are, um, you know, I've mentioned Synedia already, but you have other consortia and, and, and efforts that are really looking to promote innovation, to respond to the needs of the defense industry and to bolster it um, so that it is very successful. Another major contributor to the blue economy is the University of Rhode Island. And again, Bruce Corliss um, contributed to that where we have, um, where we have a uh, $125 million research vessel that's coming our way. And it's one of three uh, amazing research vessels um, in the country that has that capacity. Um, we had a bond that was secured to promote URI's expertise. And of course we do a lot of proactive planning to design our coast and education and outreach. So URI um, in particular, um, the Bay Campus um, contributes significantly to our blue economy. Um, this is a, um, uh, we, had, we were able to do a very, um, uh, network analysis um, to determine what are the connections to the different sectors within the blue economy. In addition, you know, where are, who are the people and who are the organizations that really um, are connecting the blue economy? Um, we could potentially use this information to strengthen our blue economy as, as we move forward. And where are the, the, the places where we can encourage more connections? Now, this was a limited um, social network analysis. We could do more or we could ask similar questions. So this is a tool that we crafted. What we found with this network analysis is clearly the Rhode Island trade associations are the glue that hold this network together. And some sectors have stronger trade associations than others. Um, in addition, you know, um, that offshore renewable energy is and can bring the different sectors together and to the table. So that's an opportunity um, to, again, um, create a, a greater constellation of our blue economy. And that tourism and outdoor recreation, if played correctly, could play a stronger connector role as well. Um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some of the collaborations already between the Navy and um, URI. Um, uh, the top left, we have um, Austin Becker, Dr. Austin Becker from URI, who's um, having a sabbatical. And actually he's going to be at the Navy War College, I believe in January. Um, and he is working with our colleagues, my colleagues here at, at the Coastal Resources Center and GSO on working with the Navy to identify resilient risks and also how do we respond, how does the Navy and the city and the municipalities on Aquinnick Island, how do they respond to that? So a nice collaboration. Um, um, the other thing we have um, in the middle, we have um, Dr. Um, Ahikari, who is um, working with the Navy to um, conduct research that will help the Navy maximize its sonar capabilities. And then we have a whole host of opportunities to promote innovative training facilities and also workforce development. So again, the considerations are is the blue economy is growing, it's booming. Um, and there are significant pressures uh, within, you know, um, going on on our earth on, and we need to respond to them. And business as usual is not an option. So um, just quickly, some of the strategies um, that I'd like to highlight. And again, I think just in, in overall, the point is, is that um, the maritime industries, the Navy in particular, the defense industries are really leading, um, leading this and now and in cooperation and coordination with the universities. And I, I believe that, um, and I think we believe from the results of the report that, that it's a responsibility from the universities and also from you all, the Navy, the defense industry and whatnot, to really play a leadership role. And I'm saying this, it can also sort of be selfishly too, and I might be getting this wrong, so please correct me, but my, you know, um, many of your, in, the naval infrastructure, the defense infrastructure is along the coast. And so we need to consider coastal resiliency. We need to find new technologies and innovation to respond to this threat, this increase of sea level rise and apply it so that we can be, this industry can be more resilient. In addition, 
you know, around the world because of drought, increased drought or increased um, flooding um, due to coastal uh, climate change, you know, there's more strife and that requires a military response at times in some ways. And, it, and so it's important to find technologies and solutions to respond um, to this new world that we're living in. Um, so some of this, and that's overall. So some of the strategies obviously is to uh, intensify and expand leadership among scientific, political and educational leaders. As I said, we have strong leaders and there's really a need to bring everyone together and to coordinate um, and to prioritize um, the blue economy for the state. Um, the second is to design policies, implement initiatives that meet economic and social needs and do no harm to the natural environment. Um, one quick story is there is a, the, the, the only reason or one reason why Rhode Island is the only state in the country that has a wind farm is because our state recognizes the need to proactively design and determine where do we put the wind farm in a place that has the least impact on the environment as well as on the community. And this was supported by, and, and the universities played a significant role in determining where that location is, um, and the state did as well. So it was a wonderful example of a collaboration that we need to see more of. Um, number three is utilize pressing issues and leverage technical assistance and innovative approaches. So up top right, um, this was a, um, this is a, a home, a floating home to some degree where um, to respond to um, sea level rise, um, looking at innovation um, um, and, and finding solutions so we can understand our oceans and coasts uh, better. Um, to the bottom right is an image of an offshore wind farm with, with um, aquaculture growing um, or, or being harvested and whatnot within the wind farm. We need to find solutions, multi-use strategies so that we can um, use the ocean uh, more sustainably um, and um, find synergies amongst different uses. Um, number four is to prepare cross-sector workforce. You know, as I mentioned, just the defense industry is, there's great demand for a, a more competent and capable workforce. Um, and we need to share our workforce. And um, again, that requires a partnership between state, university, and the private sector. And then last, engage a broad constituency for stewarding ocean resources. For us, it's really important for our citizens and um, our communities to understand the value of the blue economy and um, what it's doing and, and, and how it connects with, with our daily life. And so it's important to, um, to, again, invest in outreach and education and to welcome um, citizens into um, these, you know, the different blue economy sectors and businesses and whatnot. So um, I think it's important. Our point here is, you know, by investing in Rhode Island's blue economy, we're promoting the sustainable growth of our state. And um, this is not something just one of us can do. Um, we need to work together. And, and what's really exciting and what I found in this report is that we're not starting from grant, ground zero. We really have some success stories. We have opportunities where we've collaborated. Um, we have such smart people here in Rhode Island um, to, and, and, and a desire to build our economy, to, um, to take care of our natural environment and our culture. And um, so we're not starting from ground zero and that's very exciting. And again, um, I would say the maritime, the naval industry, we need you at the table. We need you to be a leader. And um, so that's my point. And um, thank you for listening. This is my information. I'd be happy to feel free to reach out to me. Um, and also at the bottom is where you can find our blue economy report. We have an executive summary and then we have the, the larger report. So I'm gonna stop sharing my uh, screen. Did I do that? Yes. <laughs> okay, good.
Okay, thank you, Jen. That was excellent. Uh, a nice overview of, of the report and, and why it's important for us here, particularly at the Naval War College, to know what's been going on. So, Laura, I'm going to ask you uh, if we could stop the recording here and we'll move over to the Q&A.